Welcome back to this Deep Lizard course on reinforcement learning. I'm Mandy, and in this episode, we'll discuss how we can tune our current code project in order for our DeepQ network to solve the cart and pole environment. We last left off having completed our program by training our DeepQ network on the cart and pole environment. There, we saw that the network's average reward consistently grew over the 1,000 episode training duration. By the end of our 1,000 episodes, we had reached a 100 episode moving average of right under 90. So this growth in the reward over time certainly indicates that our DQN was learning the environment. However, in order to solve the cart and pole environment, we must reach a 100 episode average reward of 195 or higher. So given this, we need to brainstorm for how we may improve our DQN's performance to solve this environment. Two obvious things that first come to mind are tuning the hyperparameters and also experimenting with the network architecture. After experimenting with both the network architecture and the hyperparameters, however, I found that tuning these specs alone was not sufficient for solving this environment with our current setup. Sometimes in deep learning, we may need to do more than just experiment with hyperparameters or network architectures in order to solve a problem. We may, for example, decide that we might need to use a more sophisticated algorithm to solve this environment. Or perhaps we could reconsider how we're processing and passing the environment state inputs to this model. In fact, in this particular environment, we have multiple options for how we may choose to determine the state of the environment, which I've illustrated a couple of them here. In our project, for example, we chose to work with the difference of the last two rendered screen frames and then pass this difference of pixel data as input to the network. As another option, which was implemented in the original paper that used a DQN to solve Atari environments, the authors there used a stack of the last four screen frames and then passed this stack of pixel data as input to the network. The cart and pole open AI gym environment, as yet another example, returns the environment states, which are going to be passed as inputs to the DQN, as a one dimensional tensor that contains the cart position, the cart velocity, the pole angle, and the velocity of the pole at the tip. As we can see, the states returned by the gym environment here are much more simplistic than the pixel data that we have been working with or the pixel data that was used in the Atari DQN paper. So as previously mentioned, changing the network architecture and tuning the hyperparameters didn't appear to be sufficient for solving this particular environment. So as another experiment, I left the network architecture and hyperparameters unchanged from last time and changed only the way we determine the environment states and therefore the network's inputs. So instead of passing the inputs as the states of the network represented by the difference of the last two rendered screen frames, I instead used the one dimensional state tensors returned by Jim. And actually we will look at the results that we got whenever we changed the state inputs to be the ones returned by Jim. And we can see that with this change alone, our DeepQ network was able to solve this environment in just 156 episodes. So by episode 156, our 100 episode moving average had reached 195.4 and 195 is what is required to solve the environment. Now, this environment may still indeed be solvable using our original inputs, but again, we may need to use another algorithm or change exactly how we're processing those image inputs in order to do so. I encourage you to continue experimenting with this environment and share your results in the comments. In the meantime, the corresponding blog for this episode on deeplizzard.com has all of the code changes necessary in our current project to solve this environment with these new states. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. To see more content from us, check out our second channel called Deep Lizard Vlog on YouTube. And be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode on deeplizzard.com for additional resources. And while you're at it, consider joining the Deep Lizard Hive Mind where you'll gain access to exclusive perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.